Now, the status of diversity in New York City. This is a, you know, a significant topic. And for this, we have Dr. Rupmani Kandakar. She lives in New York City, and she's going to help us understand the way things work, the, you know, the social dynamic, if you will, the diversity dynamic in New York City. Uh, welcome to the show, Rupmani. Aloha, Jay. And it's my pleasure and honor again uh, to be invited on your show. And it's a pleasure to interact with you. And so now we are speaking about a city which we both love. And we both have uh, the uh, honor, like our privilege to stay in New York. So let's see. Yeah. yeah. And it's not just the food, although the food is very, very important. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So right. So right. So, so let's, let's talk about you for a minute. Um, um, you're, you're Indian. Can you talk about your, you know, early years and how you wound up in New York? So I'm an Indian. I'm a Maratha uh, uh, Hindu from uh, India, and uh, I got selected for the uh, United Nations, and I've come to uh, New York, and now an international civil servant, and writing books on the UN and about uh, life in like it's life in New York happened. Uh, it was a it was a, a fortunate uh, happening in my life. So it's a treasure that I keep close to me. And New York is a wonderful city, uh, which every uh, whoever comes to New York can call themselves a New Yorker. So that's the magic of New York. You forget where you've come from and you call yourself a New Yorker. So uh, that, <laughs> that's the fun part of it. Uh, if you but you travel city, a lot too. Yes. And so give, give us a short list of all the places you travel to, or you have traveled to. <laughs> I think only Australia and New Zealand remaining, the rest are all covered. Uh, I was just speaking I, before this, that uh, leaving Africa, <laughs> New Zealand, and Australia, I've been all over. And yeah. traveling, uh, traveling keeps, um, traveling is one of the best uh, experiences that you can get out of life. So unless, you know, one one time travel is like, a page, a chapter of your life, well done, you know. So you can pat yourself on the back when you have traveled, when you uh, breathe in different cultures, when you breathe in different uh, um, ethnic societies, you see diversity in the world. So that's what keeps you alive and that's what makes you understand the world is such a big place and such a small place at the same time. So yeah, well, <laughs> That helps yeah. you understand New York and, and vice versa. Uh, living in New York helps you understand other places, you know, so. Yes, uh, but I, I haven't lived in New York for a long time, although I visited a few months ago and uh, I was struck by, um, you know, the diversity, the tolerance, uh, and people all really get along. And, uh, you know, back when I was a kid, it wasn't quite like that. Um, there, there was, um, you know, bigotry, there was uh, racism and so forth. But I, I don't think it's like that anymore. My sense of it is that um, you know, everyone from every place gets along, uh, and it's a kind of, may I say, it's a kind of um, new chapter in the melting pot. Uh, you see it in the media, and you see it on the street. You see it in the businesses, the restaurants, the shops. Um, and you, you uh, let's start with the United Nations. What is it like at the United Nations? How do people get along? Um, are there is you know are there are there bigots in the United Nations? Uh, you know, Jay, in every country, in every place that we go, you are representative of what you come from, and when you take it to uh, where you are currently at the moment, it becomes uh, a, a a kind of a dramatic representation of who you are, and when all of them come together, when you meet somebody from another background, you know. The visibility that counts and the visibility that you take in and absorb is uh, what stands out. So in the United Nations, when we have representatives from all over the countries and they speak their point of view, what we understand from all this is to be in a multicultural uh, environment requires a lot of tolerance and an understanding. So that tolerance is what makes New York, New York uh, and the UN, UN. So when you have respect for the other person's space, that is what makes uh, the city multicultural. If the place doesn't have tolerance for the other, then you have closed countries or closed cities, closed spaces. 
So uh, tolerance is a very, very important foundation for a multicultural, multi-ethnic uh, environment to be sustained on. And a community feeling, when you feel the front is no different from you, maybe a little different, but a human being, you know, humanity comes in, you know, these big ideals um, of talking that it is uh, humanity, it is tolerance, it is understanding, it is respect for the other that come in and a uh, freedom to be who you are even when you are in a place uh, like if you, if we go to uh, say uh, uh, a russian neighborhood and you we wear our national clothes they're not going to beat us <laughs> we can wear it there is a tolerance to it so uh, that maybe they might <laughs> but but uh, that there is a kind of uh, respect and a distance that is maintained and that distance defines multiculturalism in these places yeah. so that happens yeah you know, I, I um I, I grew up in queens and um you know queens at the time was um it was kind of like a united nations bedroom community it was also um a a, a, a community for the airlines which you know was not too far away the airports and uh, so a lot of people associated with the airports and for that matter the united nations lived in in Queens, in my in my neighborhood, so my neighborhood was very um, diverse, and uh, nobody could give a rip. Uh, on the other hand, you know, the Italians lived on one block, the Irish lived on another block, <laughs> Jewish people lived on another block, uh, the Japanese on another block. Um, so they had their little enclaves, you know. And I guess the question I put to you is: It still like that? Is it still like you know, one block for one group, one block for another? Or is everybody mixed up now? Yeah. Uh, by the way, Queens is the most most diverse uh, area in the world. Uh, so, uh, eight hundred languages spoken there. Uh, so we do have these neighborhoods still, and like you know, Jay, we have uh, the, uh, like most. Maybe somebody might not go to Queens or you know Manhattan or something, but they will go to these. They will visibly know Chinatown or something like that. The point in uh, New York is we have close to 70 million tourists in a year. So you have something coming from outside also. So that kind of uh, uh, brings in uh, more ingredients to the soup. And uh, that is what uh, doesn't allow you to differentiate. And uh, when you have so many neighbors, everybody is busy in economy. They're busy in catering to tourism. They're busy in uh, showcasing their culture. And uh, most are busy in just keeping to themselves they like to be uh, new york culture is basically just let me be my own and i will let you be your own if you disturb me uh, you're in for it so uh, you you know the advertisements in the in new york in the subway are above eye level nothing is at eye level so you don't stare at anybody eye to eye you have to either look up or you have to look down if <laughs> you cannot disturb <laughs> anybody's face that is a very nice point that i saw you know in uh, New York, so uh, nobody really stares. Even if you have a gun and you sit next to me, you are most welcome. You are traveling on the subway. I'm traveling on the subway. So nobody disturbs each other's zone, and uh, that is that is um, very important in a multicultural city, country, or you know, space. <laughs> that yeah, way. yeah. The other thing I noticed on my trip was uh, I could strike up a conversation with anybody. Uh, yeah. They would they would respond to me, you know. A few years ago, um, you know, my, some of my family lived up near Columbia, okay, and they had a party, and this was into Harlem now. Um, so I went to the party, and it, and it was a Saturday night, and I decided I was going to walk down Broadway. That's a long walk. I was I was midtown of the long walk, um, and I and I walked down Broadway uh, at like nine or ten o'clock at night. And wow, what an experience. People were smiling. Uh, if, I, if I did look at them, they looked back, they smiled at me. Maybe, maybe there was something about my clothing, I don't know. Um, and, I, and I went into the bodegas. That was my favorite experience. In the bodegas, you had these um, you know, Puerto Rican people, and they were so friendly. They were so friendly and warm and make jokes, lots of jokes, and I could make jokes. And, strangers now in the bodega. And I said, this is different than I remember it to be. I mean, we are, uh, you know, we have a kinship. I have a kinship with them. 
because of the city and I appreciate them and I'm in their neighborhood and they don't mind me coming in their neighborhood, then they're, they're not going to be, you know, they're not going to be angry at me or anything. They're not, they, my security was really assured. I was not worried for one minute that anybody would, would accost me, uh, mug me or anything like that. And uh, I, I found my walk down Broadway to be an extraordinary experience because it wasn't like what I remember. It, it's the new New York. You know, the, uh, the Puerto Ricans get along with, uh, with the African-Americans. Everybody gets along with everybody. And you can strike up a conversation and make fun and have, mm -hmm. have good humor. Uh, I found that in June, too. Uh, and, and the guy I was traveling with said, how, how can you do that? How, well, this is New York. You can do that in New York. You can, yeah. you can stop a guy in the street and say, hi, it's all right. You know, you can't do that in too many places in the world. No. That's <laughs> Yeah. There is a lot of camaraderie in, in uh, New York. See, there is something known as a potluck when everybody gets their own dishes. And in the UN, we do have these uh, uh, lunches where everybody gets their own dish. And uh, so one such thing happened in Halloween. And everybody got their own dishes. And at the end of the uh, um, lunch, uh, Jay, we said, it all seems like it's from home. So it doesn't feel like it's from this country or there's not a lot of differences. Just plain delicious. So uh, that kind of similarity that you seek to find in diversity is the thing that keeps uh, New York going. And uh, CJ, after uh, the September 11 attacks, uh, Islamophobia came into the forefront. You had a fear of the visible religion. You had a fear of, uh, you know, uh, religion which is visible to the eye. The hatred is a tad higher than religions which are... Uh, not visible. I mean, sometimes you can't make out whether it's he's following a particular religion if he wears uh, regular clothes. But clothes can uh, display the religion and then hatred can follow. But even in the face of such a big catastrophe, the uh, response was muted. It was not something like there was a massacre, which would have happened in any other place. Mm -hmm. Or uh, if a community is attacked, it doesn't mean the community start, start fighting with themselves. So the diversity brings around uh, such a bonding that you feel he's my neighbor in New York rather than saying that, hey, he's ethnically this, he's racially uh, that person, I need to fight him. No, you boil down to being a New Yorker rather than being a uh, uh, racial identity or, um, no, you know, my language is different from yours. Maybe I'll communicate in sign language. Uh, so it's basically about how much a city can tolerate. You know, uh, my story uh, back in 9-11, um, um, the, there's this uh, Chinese uh, lawyer and mm -hmm. she went for a master's degree at NYU and she arrived on September 10th, um, 2001. And, and um, you know, she woke up in the morning and everything was burning and the, the Twin Towers were coming down and, and her building was like a block away was because NYU has all these properties downtown. And so she had to leave, she had to evacuate the building and she was there in the smoke and the rubble and, you know, all the chaos. And uh, she, she didn't speak that much English and she's walking around in lower Manhattan, um, not sure what to do or where to go or anything, terrified. And um, all of a sudden a man taps her on the shoulder. Mm. He says, excuse me, um, are you, and he asked her name and she says, yes, I am, I am. Um, and he said, I'm, I'm from N NYU. Okay. Oh, I, I've been looking for you. So nice. So nice. So nice. There's yeah. a lot of care. There is a lot of care. You know, um, uh, Jay, uh, how many lives are lost in, uh, New York without, uh, uh, based it's, it's, um, it's crime. But hate crime and racial crime is limited compared to the other places. Uh, so, and when you go and see how immigrants have built the city up as their own, you know, you have uh, people contributing. Suppose there's a, a voluntary uh, uh, event that takes place. The number of people who come forward to help, volun uh, the voluntary help is uh, phenomenal. They will not hesitate to come and uh, assist or come and help. Like the New York Marathon, it's run on purely on volunteers. You have volunteers who are uh, at, the, at the finish line, at the 
for the athletes, for everybody. So that's what makes New York such a, a city. And the vibe of the city is something which you cannot deny. Because if you go to Central Park and you feel you're a New Yorker, you're a New Yorker. You can't forget your identity. But how about so the how, how about the you know the, the divide over money? I mean, there are people in New York who are wealthy beyond description. Okay, and, they, and we know what neighborhoods they live in, okay? uh, yes. and we and we know what restaurants they eat in, and so forth. Um, but, and then there are people who really don't have two shekels to rub together, and somehow no. they get along. They understand each other. They each each one of them has a has a place in the New York society, and uh, they appreciate each other. Um, but is it troubling, you know, for example, to find um, somebody in the subway who's a billionaire and, and somebody who doesn't have any money at all? Uh, is there is there a, a kind of divide about that? Is it is it a divisive phenomenon in New York City? Uh, economically, we have two races who are uh, financially not well up, the Hispanics, and uh, uh, I think the the. I'll just let you know about this. But they are financially down. But see, Jay, uh, subways uh, are used by everybody. There is like, and a person who has no money in New York can still survive. There are stories of so many people who have come to the city, started out in homeless shelters, and built empires from themselves for themselves. One famous uh, person I'll tell you is the master chef uh, uh, from uh, India who came and he stayed in a... Um, uh, homeless shelter. He started the first day in a homeless shelter. And today he owns a restaurant in uh, uh, New York and he's traveling the world. So there are so many stories of uh, uh, actors who have uh, seen uh, from, they've risen up the ranks in New York. So New York is a city where if, even if, you know, you don't have anything, you still feel you have everything. And, uh, uh, and survival Survival is possible in New York. Just yeah, well, because, well, the thing know, is, the thing is, it strikes me that you, you know, you can get a job. Um, yes. it, was, it was always thus because New York is fluid in terms of jobs. Now you're not going to get the, the CEO job, um, but no. you get a job. And so, uh, suppose, suppose I separate you from your job, uh, Rupmani. I uh, suppose I put you out on the street, out outside the UN, for example. Uh, how long would it take you to get another job in Manhattan? You apply, you start with small jobs, you start with part-time jobs, you start with a couple of jobs, maybe you work longer hours. But uh, survival, uh, you know, your degrees, if you don't, there are so many people who live without degrees. So uh, people who have come without any uh, qualifications and still made it, not made it to uh, Trump Tower, but have made it, have made a house for themselves, have, have survived with a decent livelihood so uh, and like you know jay majority of the population doesn't own houses in uh, uh, new york they rent out their houses and a considerable income is uh, risen for them through rentals so uh, you feel like you're part of the crowd because everybody's renting a house nobody feels uh, like if you're renting a house in brooklyn or you're renting a house in manhattan uh, you're rent uh, <laughs> you're paying rent <laughs> so you are you're fine with it, isn't it? The owners are few. So uh, once you own a house in New York, that that's the time you feel yeah, I have settled down. So yeah, you yeah. rent, take in uh, people, uh, you rent a room out. Uh, so that's that's what happens in New York. So but nobody is in a rat race amongst themselves because everybody is the is in the immigrant boat <laughs> or they are in the <laughs> New York boat. So. Uh, Nobody's competing for status. Everybody's competing for space and survival. So uh, nobody's trying to buy a bigger house and show off their Christmas lights. Everybody knows everybody's renting houses or everybody, few people are the owners and they like it. They don't show. Up. So even if you have a Hollywood star traveling in the subway with you or uh, you have them opening an event in New York, in the United Nations, uh, you feel like they're part of the crowd. They don't have anything spectacular about them when they're in New York. Everything feels like a movie set. I had once uh, heard somebody say that. <laughs> New York feels like a big movie set. Yeah, so isn't that true? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So do, you, do you ever experience um, you know, racial prejudice? Um, did you ever feel that people were blocking you out in some way or 
uh, treating you, uh, you know, with in a, in a well, a lack of respect? Um, uh, no, maybe because of the qualifications or maybe because of the place I work in. Maybe if I was working in a subordinate uh, position, I would have felt that from a superior. But working in the United Nations is uh, a pleasure and uh, honor. Uh, so uh, everybody's, uh, uh, there's no there's no boss <laughs> in the United Nations. You work for your own self <laughs> and you try to solve the problems of the world. So uh, let's see how many problems. So, no, <laughs> I want to talk about food for a minute, you know. Uh, when I was there, I talked to you and you and you, you gave me a recommendation for an Indian restaurant, something about spice. Uh, and it was uh, just outstanding in every way. Food and service, the food, I, I can still taste the food. That's how good it was. I'm going um, to send you spices from. I'm going to get some spices and Definitely. <laughs> so... Uh, Food is, um, you know, it seems like, you know, COVID has taught us about food. We, we may be more interested, more sensitive to food. And I don't mean just the, the normal food that you eat, but all foods from all places. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I think that uh, Hawaii, for example, uh, could be a, a global center in food because we have so many cultures, just as New York is a global center for food because there are so many cultures so many excellent, excellent restaurants, and and the competition uh, of, among the restaurants makes it clear that if if you can't cut it, you're out. <laughs> you're gonna fall. <laughs> Somebody yeah. else take that space. But can you talk about the food in New York, the restaurants, and and you know how the food plays uh, the kind of, this kind of democratizing effect on people? Yeah, when we when you walk in New York, when you see, uh, you know, you always say, let's have, uh, let's have. Chinese today, let's have Indian today, let's have South today. You know, you have this um, trend that you decide the kind of food that you're going to have because everywhere you have these food outlets and New York is known for entertainment, food, economy. So uh, when you have uh, food playing such an important part and, you know, it ranges from uh, a hot dog on the, uh, sub, uh, on the pavement to a fancy restaurant uh, right up... Uh, um, say anywhere grand central or you know trump tower or the delegates uh, lounge in the united nations so all these places you ha you can have any uh, dollar spent on any cuisine you want and uh, your palate will be satisfied uh, it will not be uh, your you know your taste buds will not be disappointed because you can have everything everywhere in new york and that's the beauty of it because when the immigrants came they bought in each one bought in their own. And uh, so we don't have New York. Being in New York means you can taste everything. You can be anybody, you can do anything. So that kind of freedom that comes with it, you know, if you want to go to a Jamaican restaurant and uh, have their cuisine, it, it, it gives you a feeling of being in the West Indies. So that much of authenticity, uh, like we have uh, in, uh, back in India, when we have to have Chinese, they will say, no, no, this is not the Chinese that is made in China. This is Indian Chinese. You have put a lot of uh, your own. But in New York, you can taste authentic uh, cuisines as they are made in their own hometown. They've kept that. I don't know how this happens. But even in the melting point, each one has maintained their own uh, unique identity. So that is very nice. That's because people demand it. Uh, they say, I, I want real Chinese. Uh, I'm on Szechuan <laughs> right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Every every single group has a, right. a you know, a, a pure expression of the, yeah. their food culture. And, and you can have that. You, can, you, you may have to travel a little bit, but you can have that. Um, and I, I, I really, actually, I miss that. And I, I think Hawaii has to do better at that because we, we do have the cultural, you know, diversity, but we you know, the food we have to work on, I think, and they are working on it. Um, yes. But I want to I want to skip to one other thing you mentioned, and that is uh, entertainment. I take two parts uh, of entertainment. You know, one, of course, is the museums. Um, okay. so, you know, you could be standing next to a billionaire and uh, enjoying the same art, um, you know, the same museum experience. And everyone goes. You can go to a museum and it is as crowded as any museum in the world, in Europe, in Asia, anywhere. Um, it's it's a, a kind of an avocation 
uh, to see what they have and to see the best and the brightest, uh, uh, you know, curators uh, with the most incredible international exhibits. It's all there, right? Yeah, it's it's and it's so accessible, Ajay. If you want to spend a day and you say, I want to go to the Met a Museum, uh, you know, you feel uh, you have done, you've seen, you, you feel enriched when you come out. And that kind of experience happens in only a few places. Like you go to the London Museum uh, and you go to the Louvre. It's that kind of a standard that is maintained in such a busy city. So you have just economy running on the street. And suddenly you have something which gives you a cultural experience, which gives you a, a experience of heritage. So, uh, you know, you, you can spend, you can teach your children that uh, there is a diversity even in the uh, things that the city offers back to its citizens. So uh, when we uh, decide to spend uh, time in the museum, it is, it, is an, uh, it is a thrilling experience or going to the zoo, uh, you know, you learn about so many things. So uh, going to Central Park is like a, a totally different experience. You really feel, uh, I mean, nobody can cross Central Park in one day, but when you go through uh, for a job or you go for the, uh, for the zoo, everything, you feel, wow, it's, an, it's a nice event. You know, people come from, uh, another place just to see this and we are privileged to be staying here and enjoying that and sunsets and everything in New York changes nothing is same you cannot say I just did this yesterday why should I do it today so every day also becomes unique and um, the experiences that you can have can range from and, and uh, Jay what about the uh, markets that uh, happen in uh, New York the farmers market uh, in Union Square or you know you have uh, the Hispanics or anybody Latinos putting up a music show in uh, uh, Bryan Park. So you have these places where you can just be part of that culture for a moment and come out. So you, you enrich yourself. It's like traveling, isn't it? Like you were speaking. When you travel, you pick up uh, experiences. You pick up love from another place and you keep it in your heart. So that's the same place in, uh, thing in New York when you experience an evening or you experience a visit to any place, uh, you're, you're going with the crowd, but you're picking up so many things from the city. And it's something that you never forget. Never forget. I mean, I, I'm sure every traveler who leaves New York has a tear in their eye and wants to come back. So it's it's a, that kind of a place. Yeah, you're, you're as much a New Yorker as anybody I ever met, Rupmati. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk for a moment uh, about, about uh, the performing arts. Let's talk about music. Uh, let's talk about dance. Let's talk about opera. Uh, let's talk about Broadway. Broadway. How can we <laughs> not talk about Broadway? Uh, this is a leveling experience. It's yes. not only that you can find so many things that enlighten you intellectually and culturally, but you're, you're sitting next to somebody and the seats are small and you feel that person next to you. When that person applauds, when that person laughs, when that person has an emotional reaction, it's transmitted to you. So the oh. audience is all together. Talk about how that works. Oh, Broadway is magical, isn't it, Jay? The lights of Times Square, and you know, you feel you feel just a, a star factor in that entire uh, environment. And even, not only us, even the Hollywood stars who come from the lights feel it's a privilege to uh, star on Broadway. They feel it's part of their resume. And uh, so to experience this kind of thrill and this kind of live entertainment is uh, is unique to uh, this place, uh, to uh, uh, New York and to America itself. America, like it, I'm telling you, New York is one of the most uh, beautiful expressions of being an American. And uh, it showcases all the right values of freedom, of uh, expression, of, uh, what do you say, uh, of... Uh, that thing where you can you have you can dream and you can achieve it. So uh, when when we see on Broadway this extravaganza of uh, lights and dance and music, it it thrills me. The thrilling and <laughs> the Halloween parades. Jay, what about the parades? You're missing out the parades. I mean, uh, those parades, uh, the Navy parade, the um, the Halloween parades. They are so uh, you you blend with them. I mean, uh, how can you, you wait for it? Like, when can I have the next parade? And uh, I mean, uh, New York comes together. And Halloween is 
just one experience you have to have in New York because the entire city transforms into a masquerade ball. So <laughs> you have every character around you and it's, it's wonderful. It's just wonderful. Well, that so, takes me to uh, something you mentioned a, a minute ago, and, and that is Central Park. And I, I, uh, I visited Central Park and I visited Washington Square Park, which is a, a kind of very condensed Central Park. <laughs> so much there <laughs> in only a couple blocks. Um, but, you know, go to the parks now is way different than going to the parks when I was in school. Yes. Um, the, it's like everything, everybody from everywhere, every kind of nature, everything, everything, some things really weird, really weird, uh, with, with families and kids and strange people, <laughs> strange <laughs> cultures. And and this, it presents slightly differently uh, in the sense that um, uh, Washington Square Park is a, is a reflection of Greenwich Village, which is you know a very strange and creative neighborhood. Um, and and uh, on the other hand, uh, Central Park has everything. It has everything for everybody, and you can you can just sit on a little bench and watch them pass by and see the whole world. Uh, you know, passing, passing you. What? So, do you do that? What is it like for you? What does it mean for you? Uh, Central Park is it's it's one of the most magical places because just because of the changing the weather, uh, you know, you can see the entire reflection of the uh, climate on the uh, foliage. In autumn, you have a beautiful blush of colors. You know, you have. It's it's like it's uh, like God's painting it for you, and in snow it's completely white, and you know on an autumn day, uh, you, everything is just dry, and every sunset is different. So uh, I mean I can, I have not been able to say one day is the same as the other, and sitting on the benches of uh, of uh, Central Park is uh, it's you you've seen Enchanted. It's something like that. You are just. Uh, you're just happy and grateful that you have reached New York and you are you're experiencing this for that moment in your life. So uh, it doesn't matter what comes tomorrow, what happened before. It's that experience that you stay in that moment. And New York is all about moments. If I tell you, Jake, nobody keeps, uh, uh, nobody carries a baggage. Everybody's got their own issues and everything. But if you tell them, ask them, they tell you that time. Nobody's got the um, patience or time to talk about before or talk about after they will just give you a brisk hello hi and they will nobody will uh, interfere in your life or nobody will uh, disturb you if you don't want to be disturbed so it's how much you give you you get so it's very uh, einstein's law <laughs> <laughs> so my last question for you rupmati is this um you know you've been there for years now um, and you've seen it, and you've seen it change. And uh, I would like to know what you think uh, the future is like. Uh, will we have more diversity, more tolerance? Uh, wh where is it all going? I mean, it, it's you paint a nice picture, and I think it's an accurate picture as far as I'm concerned. Um, but where where is it all going? Is will we see more racial diversity, more religious diversity? more cultural diversity, more food diversity, more intellectual diversity? Will we see more of that going forward? Uh, are you seeing that change now? Yeah, uh, Jay, I think New York is uh, progressive. And uh, we we just find that it was a little disturbing uh, a couple of years back when we saw the, uh, you know, people on the street, there was a racially um, uh, colored phenomenon which happened on the streets and with, in which the uh, streets of New York were looted and it was uh, not known whether they will op open back again. You know, they were, they were apprehensive of the business if they were going to be ransacked like that. So, uh, you know, the, I hope the tolerance of New York stays in this way because uh, uh, New York in the uh, yesteryears was known for crime. It was supposed to be a scary place. From that, we have progressed to being such a um, uh, adaptive uh, city so uh, and a representation of the right values of america so we have to respect and we have to uh, take responsibility that this should go ahead it should not be regressive 
and we should not uh, uh, demean ourselves to uh, low values of uh, coming down to divisions and uh, divisive politics will be played. Of course, it will be played for uh, a political mileage, but that should not affect common life. You know, economy is one of the running factors of uh, New York. Entertainment is one of the running factors. Food, like you said. And if you have these uh, these sim simplistic things being colored with the uh, political use of uh, hate and divisive nature, it is not good for our uh, city. It is not good for our country. And uh, we have to understand we represent American values. So we have to understand this is culture of America. And culture of America is representing the mixed, uh, what is the mixed uh, blend of immigrants. Their values are reflected in freedom, liberty, and respect. We have to bring that out. You, if you go on devising, dividing it, it will lead to a very wrong picture. Because, like we, we have discussed in our previous programs, today, uh, the world looks up to America. America is the hegemon of international world politics of the international uh, world order we can't uh, <laughs> forget that so what happens in america is seen outside so likewise each city each person has to understand even if the immigrant comes in he has to understand he's part of being uh, american or new yorker and he has to understand his uh, responsibility if he does something it's not right he has to work towards progress of the country and I, I am of a very strong opinion that when immigrants come into any country, they are supposed to blend in. They are not supposed to uh, disturb the peace of the uh, peace and decorum of that place. If you disturb it, please leave. <laughs> if you don't, please blend in and help our city to progress as our own. You have to be. You have to have a oneness with the city. Only then you can uh, take it up with. You can't uh, divide and you can't disturb the culture of a place. I, I so can't resist asking you one one more question, Rupmati. Yes. Okay, there was an article in the Times not too long ago about um, some fellow who was running for office. And he was in his early 20s. And, and he had come from this generation, this generation of youth and vitality and, you know, uh, diversity that we've been talking about, tolerance. And he was running for office. And I said to myself, this is the future. And and New York, you know, germinates people like this. And uh, I want to see him in Congress, if for no other reason, that he's part of that generation, that he brings this special quality to Congress. Congress needs that so much. Like, as a matter of fact, Congress needs AOC, right? right. <laughs> she, she is an important contribution of the whole New York thing to Congress. So what do you think about that? You know what is what is the role of the you know the the young generations that you see around you in New York who are diverse and tolerant in every which way who could be maybe they will be leaders of the country going forward. CJ, uh, being a, a old fashioned politician and a new age politician, there is not much of a difference. But you see, old age politicians brought people together. They they built the foundation of our land. So they must be doing something right. So the new age politicians who are thinking that they can collect political mileage out of divisive politics, they should halt that. They should mute, it, mute that. Uh, you know, you have to take in everybody. If uh, the role of a politician is to mute the divisive uh, powers and if there is something wrong, something racially or ethnically or, uh, you know, if something uh, hurtful to the immigrants happens, they don't highlight it. They have to take it back, address that problem, and bring it into the majority. If you highlight and uh, you know you milk out uh, political mileage out it out of it, it will benefit you personally, but it will damage the city and the country to a large extent. So uh, this kind of new age politics, um, I kind of disagree with that because uh, they they play to the media. You know, uh, it's it's not a circus. It's politics, and politics is supposed to help people and politics is supposed to assist people towards uh, employment towards uh, a good livelihood that is the role of a politician not divide and collect political mileage i keep my seat i keep my representation in the house 
uh, through divisive politics. One community will vote for me. I'm sure about that. I will keep my seat and I will carry on ahead. That is not right. Politics is about bringing a, a harmony in. As ideal as it sounds, politics is about being neutral. And uh, being neutral means muting the uh, divisive area and bringing out the positive. So bringing out a balance in your society will help new age politicians much, much more than I feel. I just feel they play to the media and uh, um, taking media coverage out of uh, highlighting something which can be divisive or can be dangerous is like that spark which lights a fire. You, politicians are not supposed to light that fire. That spark has to be uh, <laughs> shut okay. down. Okay, I want to be clear about this. Uh, I'll vote for you. Rukmani <laughs> Kandakar, our, our friend in New York, our friend at the United Nations, uh, who speaks to us about all kinds of subjects. Thank you so much for joining me today, Rukmani. This was a, a really wonderful discussion. Thank you so much, Jay. Always, always a pleasure. <laughs> Aloha. <laughs>